I'm here with Professor Lawrence Baker, who's a professor here at Stanford Medical School. And, and what are we going to talk about? Well, we pay physicians a lot of different ways in this country, and I thought it'd be useful to spend a minute thinking about the different ways that we do that, the concepts, organizations, different practices that are out there. So literally, how do physicians receive their compensation? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we can go through this in a couple of different ways, but there are three ways that we can start out talking about, three general ways that we organize the payment of physicians, and uh, they turn out to be fee-for-service, Fee yeah. for service. Let me write this. Fee for service. Keep going. Fee I'll, for service. I'll catch up. Yeah, sometimes we say FFS, fee for service. FFS. Okay, makes yep. sense. <laughs> uh, the second one we call capitation. Okay. And the third one, of course, salary. Too, too close to decapitation for me, but maybe it's unrelated. <laughs> but okay. And then salary. And then salary. Okay. And and so fee for service, that seems to be a little bit common sense. Is, is that literally it? Like Fee for service. In a fee for service system, a physician gets paid a fee for every service that they do. It's kind of like going to a restaurant. You know, you order the drink, you order a salad, maybe an entree, a dessert. The restaurant keeps a list of all the things that you ordered, and at the end of the night, there's a, a price associated with each one, and you add up the price associated with each of the things you got. That makes your total bill. That's the fee-for-service kind I of system. I see. And so this is kind of what a doctor to private practice would, would face. Well, the... doctors and doctors can be paid fee-for-service in a lot of different arrangements. Okay. So okay. they might be in, in private practice paid this way. Some physician groups are paid this way. And fee-for-service concepts come up even in large organizations uh, like the Stanford Medical School, where some people are sometimes paid for their work in the hospital. According I to see. But the general idea is if they're not providing service or if there's a slow day, then they're not going to be making money that day. Right. Right. The more services they do, the more expensive services they do, the more right. costly that they do, the more revenue that their practice will generate. I see. And we'll, we'll talk later about whether that's a good idea. Yep. There will be, <laughs> that, of course, has, that has implications for the way right. that physicians right. act and the, the way that right. they practice. So what's, what's capitation? Because that's, that's, I'm not familiar with that. So capitation, the general idea is to do something quite different than fee-for-service. The term capitation comes from the Latin per head. Oh, uh, so course. it's really so the decapitation, literally per gonna, head. Well, we're going to put it, yes, we're going to put yeah. it back on per head. Yes, uh, yeah, per and head. So we're going to pay physicians per person that they have in their practice. And the kind of building blocks of a capitation system uh, would be, one, a panel of patients who are assigned to a doctor. I so see. So the doctor might have a 1,000 patients for which he or she is responsible. We'll call that group their their members, their their panel. Sometimes people call it their covered lives. I Second see. piece of a capitation arrangement is an agreement about what the physician is going to be responsible for under the agreement. So mm -hmm. we might say it's primary care services, all the office visits and basic tests and follow-ups that those patients might need, but maybe not their hospitalizations or their expensive surgeries right. and things like that. Right. So you have some group of patients, you have some agreed set of services, and then you would define a payment which uh, in the jargon gets called the PMPM, the per member per month. Per member per month. And who is making this payment? It is the, I guess, the employer of the doctor. So this, this, this definitely would not be the case with a, oh, go ahead. So it would be the insurance company generally that's going to pay the doctor this okay. payment. So if an insurance company, let's say Blue Shield, Blue mm -hmm. Cross, Aetna, Cigna, any number of different mm -hmm. companies that might be out there, has an arrangement with a physician that they take some, some number of their insured people are seen by and become part of the panel of that doctor, they could arrange to pay that doctor on a capitation basis I see. by saying, you've got a thousand of our patients, here's what we're going to pay you to take care of them. I see. And it, and it seems to make a lot of sense for the insurance company because now you don't have this incentive for the doctor to... You change the way the, the whole incentive works. So mm -hmm. now if a, a physician gets, say, $25 per member per month for taking care of their thousand patients, they get 25000 right. a month. They've got to do what needs to be done for those patients, but they don't get paid extra if they do something additional, if they do a more expensive test as opposed right. to a cheaper test. They get paid the same amount. So you I take see. away the incentive that exists in a fee-for-service system that tends to get people to try to do more things or at least creates a world in which it's possible to do more things and get paid for it. Right. And, and it's, you it's replace more it with a different. And it's more predictable for the doctor, too. Maybe. Well, it could be predictable for the doctor, although in some sense it's predictable, and in another sense it's not. An important difference between fee-for-service right. and capitation, uh, we'll say in health policy, is associated with risk or this concept right. of risk. Uh, and when we talk about risk here, we mean financial risk associated with the health of the patients or variations in the needs of the patients in a given month. So if you're a fee-for-service, if you're being paid fee-for-service, the doctor doesn't face any real risk. If it's a bad month, everybody's sick, everybody needs lots of care, they're going to get paid for delivering that care. Right. Uh, under capitation, the doctor does face more of that risk. They're getting paid a fixed amount. Right. They've got to deal with whatever I the see. In, in a high-volume so, month, the doctor takes 
kind of takes the hit and capitation. But on a low volume month, the insurance company takes the hit. So it goes both ways. It kind of evens out. Right. The insurance company, uh, well, no, the doctor always, the doctor benefits in the low volume. Yes, month, right? exactly. The doctor right. kind of right. averages out. If in a good arrangement, this will be sort of even over time. The doctor's looking right. out okay. But these risk issues have been problems right. in some capitation arrangements, especially if you're a small doctor practice. And you got a lot of variation from month to month. Maybe you're not a great manager. You can get out. You can go out of business if you have a few bad months. Who, who decides that it will be capitation or free for? Is it the doctor's choice or the insurance company says this? No, you will do this. So over time, it's been a bit of negotiation back and right. forth. So insurance companies have preferences about how they do this, and mm. doctors have preferences about how this happens. And so sometimes some of it's driven just by history. The Medicare program, for example, got started in the 1960s when fee-for-service was the most common way for right. physicians to be paid, and that's largely persisted in that program for historical reasons. It's right. just worked out that way. In the 1990s, a lot of health plans decided, the insurance companies decided that in the private market they'd like to do more capitation, so right. they did. Uh, and they started pu uh, pushing these arrangements, trying to get physicians to agree. They were successful for a while, and then lately it's been a little more physicians have said, we don't like capitation so well, we'd rather go back to fee-for-service, that's working better. So the negotiation has gone a little I more see. the other way lately. Uh, have there been studies that showed when you know doctors who are, who are uh, compensated under capitation do um, don't uh, order as many services or, or perform as many services? So the literature on this is... Um, yeah is pretty clear that it makes a difference. We, don't, we like to think that it doesn't make a difference. The doctors, right, you know, right. Doctors, Most of them are all about the health of the patient, but... Well, well that's, I mean. that's, the, that's the thing, right? So there are, there are hundreds of thousands of doctors in the country, right. and undoubtedly out there are some that pay close attention to the financials, but I, I think actually you're right. Most right. of them probably don't, on a day-to-day -day basis, pay close attention. You know, at the end of the year, they'll see yeah. the financials from their practice. Maybe right. they'll think it through. But if you've got to pay um, the college tuition, then all of a sudden, hey, maybe an MRI wouldn't hurt or a little extra... This or that. You know, I, th I think that's part of it. But the other <laughs> thing that I think is going on in the background is the general, maybe almost subtle, but things that you don't notice that create a system and let a system evolve in a particular right. way. So doctors like to do things for their patients. Patients like to have things done for them. A fee-for-service system creates a world in which everybody is fine with that. You know, right. you can do that. And so pretty soon you get used to doing that. And right. It just becomes the first thing you think of right. to do these extra things. Right. Neither party, neither the doctor nor the patient has any incentive, really, of saying, wait... Right. Why Who's paying for that? This? Although someone else is. Okay. Someone, it's, it's fine. <laughs> right. And and you know it creates in the background these incentives for people who develop new products and services right. to develop them and for it makes it easy for a hospital say to put in a big new piece of equipment that they they're pretty sure they can pay for and once it's sitting there and you pass it every morning on your right. way into the hospital it just becomes that much easier to use it and so it sort of guides our system the evolution of our system in a way that has led us to a point now where we consume a lot of health care. Maybe sometimes health care that we don't need. It's often health care that's beneficial, but it's all costly. And so that sets us up for the kind of dynamics and the challenges we have to face. How, how common is, is, I guess we, maybe we should talk about salary before I talk about, before we talk about how common they are. We can, yeah, we can, we can pick that up as we go along. Fee for service and capitation have been uh, ebbing and flowing. Frankly, mm -hmm. in the in at the in the U.S. at the moment, fee for service is a very common way for people to be paid, and capitation is is declining. There are still oh really? Uh, some so this HMOs. is uh, so even though fee for service was where everyone started, capitation kind of went a little bit in vogue, and then. No one's really a fan of it. Right. Or the it, doctors it aren't a fan of picked it. Picked up. Really. The doctors were less of a fan, and so they've been. the arrangements have been shifting more toward insurance arrangements that would use more fee-for-service these days. So the right. U.S. is uh, definitely, I think, majority fee-for-service. Who decides what the panel, because it sounded like the insurance companies would pay for part of the panel of a, of a doctor would be under capitation. So this these kinds of arrangements can in practice get kind of complicated right, to sort right. out. The concept of paying per head is clear, but right. there will be variations that go on. So if you uh, change the scope of services, you change the arrangement. If you have a primary care arrangement right. for capitation, that's one piece, but of course it leaves off right. you know, the MRI or the surgery. And what would happen in those cases is a health plan would have an arrangement for primary care services with some doctors under capitation, yeah. then they'd have other arrangements with other doctors. They might, say, have a capitated arrangement with some cardiologists I to see. do the cardiology, or they might have an arrangement with some cardiologists to pay fee-for-service to those cardiologists. I see. So, so it's, a big, the, it's big mixed up. But obviously, there's an incentive. If, if, you, do, if you are being paid capitation, you want the healthiest people in, your, in, your, in that capitation panel. So there's another incentive that's in the right, background right, here that's right. a selection kind yeah, of incentive. Exactly. And so, you know, it's, again, a thing where I think doctors probably don't think about this, right. most doctors, on a day-to-day -day basis, right. but it's a subtle uh, force operating in the background. If you're paying, if you're getting capitation and you can take actions that would get you right. a healthier patient bunch right. for that same $25,000, right. say, uh, you end up a little bit ahead at the end of the month. And, you know, doctors don't, I think, like to 
shift patients off, and there are some right. laws that prevent certain right. kinds of activities, but uh, subtly in the background, it helps it's, the yes. system evolve in that direction, no, that's and right. so we probably see it's some of that kind incentives. of thing happen. Okay, and salary is what we imagine. I mean, this is how most of us get paid. Salary is what you imagine. It's an agreement to be paid a certain amount per year for some amount of work. You know, but this would would this also this wouldn't be from the insurance companies, would it? So what happens? We talk about these three as yeah. being different things, but when you get to the real world interpretation or real world um, uh, looking at systems that are out there, what you'll see is often mixes between these. And so the one of the pieces is uh, one of the pieces of of disentangling this is multi level systems and that's where salary becomes kind of important to think about. So one common thing that happens is physicians group together into larger practices right. uh, and that larger practice collects the activity of all the doctors that work in that practice, right. bills for that from an insurance company and then disseminates or distributes the money right. among the doctors. And so what you will often see in real life and that complicates the inference here is say a large practice that bills an insurance company on a fee for service basis right. for the collective activity of all the doctors takes that resulting pool of money and divides right. it up, maybe pays some of the doctors a salary, maybe pays them a salary with some sort of bonus that right. depends on how much work they did right. and does other things. And so sometimes the incentive that an individual doctor sitting in a room with a patient is looking at might be different than yes. the incentive facing of, the managers of, the of that practice who might the then want to get the doctors to do something that's right. different than... But the general idea is if, if you... I mean, the only way to get a salary is if there's some organization between the doctor and the insurance companies to kind of yes. insulate the doctor. So the important piece, one of the important pieces here that... Um, we think about is that fee-for-service works in almost any physician right. practice, a solo practitioner, one right. person working by themselves or two together could do this. Uh, capitation almost always works in a, any kind of physician practice, right. with the exception that if you're a very small practice, the risk you face from right. month to month, depending on the sickness of your patients, might put you out of business if you're not really on top of it. Right. So we like to think capitation could work in any practice, but really only larger ones. And salary is a, a nice incentive in a lot of ways, but requires you to have a big organization right. to be able to do this. And so some of the differences you see in how physicians get paid have a lot to do with the size of the organization they work in. Make, makes complete sense. Well, thanks for that.